Wild at Heart is one of those passion projects that came to life through the hard work, blood, sweat, and tears of a Nintendo fan, and people are looking pretty excited for its release on the Nintendo Switch. Wild Heart is a game changer for real, as it's going to change Nintendo games forever, and here's exactly why. But before we get into the video, please make sure to leave a like on the video. And with that said, let's get right into today's review. First, a passion project. Wild at Heart is truly the hubris of a Nintendo fan and a passion project. It draws great inspiration from the Nintendo game Pikmin. Although some fans of the favored and original Pikmin series may argue that Wild at Heart is a blatant ripoff of the fan favorite. We disagree on this statement because Wild at Heart feels less like a ripoff and more of a tribute to the game, and it has made sure to succeed our expectations as it has better gameplay, mechanics, and overall enjoyment as compared to the Pikmin series when played side by side. The game features Spritelings that help you on the way. The Spritelings are featured in the game and serve to act as an aid as the player makes his way through the game in their journey. Just like in Pikmin, you can use these sprite links to help you out, attack enemies, throw them around, and form obstacles. New classes of sprites can be unlocked along the way with their own distinct features, characteristics, and personalities. The players can use the abilities of each sprite link to help them along the way, and they can mix and match the abilities of other sprite links as the player chooses between the different classes. The whole strategy of the game basically revolves around creating the best class of sprite links. The game does a lot to bring back the nostalgia factor from the Pikmin series as players enjoy better and superior gameplay mechanics. It deserves to be compared as up there with Pikmin. Next, the storyline. Wild at Heart's story starts off with a young boy who decides to run away from home. With his departure from home, he finds himself wandering in a magical forest. The adult protectors of the forest have their lives in grave danger from an unknown entity and dark influence which is known as the Never. You play as a guy named Wake along with his friend Kirby. The story is pretty captivating as the troubled character who left his home manages to lose his friend as well, but on his way, he finds a person by the name of Greycoat who is part of an order by the name of the Green Shields. The Green Shields are scattered throughout the progressing levels and the players are tasked to find them while he also searches for his lost friend. This is where the game takes a turn and pays homage to Luigi's Mansion as the player acquires the Ghostbuster, which is quite similar to Luigi's Poltergust, but lacks the actual ability of the machine to suck up ghosts. The Green Shields imbue the device with magical powers that enhance its capabilities so the player can acquire out-of-reach items with it. As you upgrade the Ghostbuster, you can eventually use its powers for longer and longer and you can also unlock new abilities for it. Now, the Sprite Links. Afterwards, Wake comes across the real focus of the story and a part of the gameplay mechanics which are the Sprite Links. The Sprite Links can only be crafted with the help of Twiggling Pips and Blue Colored Orbs. The items have to be put into a well and out pop the Sprite Links from it. The Sprite Links have a limit of about 15 at the start of the game, but the limit relaxes Relaxes as the player progresses over time. There are a lot of sprite links to choose from as the game progresses further, so it's pretty much worth the wait. The sprite links perform your usual tasks like Pikmin, where they carry objects and perform tasks for you like killing larger monsters and groups. As you progress through the game, you can hatch larger and larger batches in one go, but the easy to finish tasks will start taking longer and longer to finish. The sprite links are individually quite defenseless as they can easily be knocked back by larger foes. Sadly, the more and more hits they take, they'll eventually die and you could do nothing about this other than going through the process of hatching more and more Spritelings. It can get pretty frustrating at times as the enemies regenerate their health once you return back to the initial location with your new batches of Spritelings. It can be a hit or miss in the later stages of the game as you can only wish for the Spritelings to be able to chip away at the health of the enemies at a steady enough rate to kill them. It is a peculiar problem for the player if the Spritelings end up unable to come back. There are some easy ways to keep track of your Spritelings. You can easily dismiss your idle Spritelings back into the Spriteling well for later use, and in case you lose them at a certain point of a level despite being unharmed, you can call them back by spending a mere 50 orbs if you cannot. The choice is entirely yours if you need the extra manpower. Up next, freedom of choice. When it comes to the freedom that you're given to make your own decisions and choices, the game has a good resemblance to Nintendo's initial AAA title for Nintendo Switch called Zelda Breath of the Wild. When you're tasked to find and meet up with other Green Shield Order members, it's pretty much up to you if you directly want to progress within the main quest of take one of the many paths that are available whether the player has a lower level and hasn't gotten the required experience and upgrades for the path. Now, a few cons. While the game is designed for players to have an easy and fun time, there's a learning curve to it and a lot is thrown at the player for them to learn and master. As the game just starts out, you're supposed to track Spritelings, resources, crafting, making more Spritelings, trying to survive, and dealing with the day and night cycle. It can be a lot to deal with, but it isn't an issue at all as the player progresses through the game. As 
the player later reunites with Kirby, there's a breath of fresh air in the game as the player is given the choice to switch between Wake and Kirby. Kirby is a welcome addition as a character as he also comes with a few new quirks, mechanics, and abilities of his own, but soon the gameplay can get tiring if you're not really into games like Pikmin. While the game is up to par and up there with all the latest games in regards to software optimizations, the game still suffers from pop in issues and load times for the other aspects of the map and the game. This just comes down to the limitations of the Nintendo Switch and what developers had to deal with as the Tegra X1 is a pretty old SOC which the Nintendo Switch relies upon. The visuals and the OLED. The load times which vary from 30 to 60 seconds are pretty worth it when you consider the pretty and astonishing visuals of the game paired with the screen's amazing OLED display. The game game's unique style with the stylized 2D characters makes sure to shine with the flora and fauna being so vibrant and pretty. All the characters and spritelings have characters imbued in them with their own sense of fashion, unique quirks, personality traits, and dialogue. The player is sure to have a good time with the gameplay, the story, and the visuals through and through. Wild at Heart borrows a lot of elements from different Nintendo IPs, and it does it with pride. The game pays tribute to all other Nintendo games and franchises while having originality and uniqueness in and of itself. The game really consists of an immersive experience with its unique 2D visuals, its pretty little spritelings, and its unique map and world. In the end, it really comes down to the player if they enjoy the game or not. The game gives a lot to the players to mess around with as the gameplay is top notch, but can get straightforward boring and repetitive if you're not a fan of it. The visuals and 2D design of the game are pretty great, but not if you're not one of those people that enjoy 2D visuals and prefer a more 3D art style for video games like Pikmin franchise. The game is pretty fantastic when it comes to being nostalgic and certain serving as a tribute and a homage to the Pikmin franchise. While we try, we can't stop comparing it to the Pikmin series as it does draw direct inspiration from it. It really does change up Nintendo's history when it comes to games by incorporating many elements from older titles. Wild at Heart is definitely a step in the right direction, and the people over at Nintendo seem to know exactly what they're doing. We hope you enjoyed today's video. Please make sure to like and subscribe and turn notifications on. Also, stay tuned for more videos in the future like this. With that said, we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.